This is what my old freebie slash resources page looked like. And this is the redesign I created from scratch in under 45 minutes. Let me show you exactly how I did it step by step. Now I wanted a page that not only looked good, but actually worked something clean, something strategic, something easy for people to find the freebie or resource they needed most. So I gave myself a very tight deadline, opened up a blank Squarespace page and started building. Now, if you're curious how to design a high converting website layout without overthinking it, you're going to love this. First thing we need to do is duplicate this page and drag it to the not link section so that I can redesign it without anyone actually seeing me do the redesign. And then when I'm done, I'll delete out the old resources page, replace this new resources page into the top navigation. Now let's evaluate what I like and don't like on this page. The things that I like are the clear ordering of items. The copy is decent on some of these freebies, but it could be lengthened and improved a bit. Um, for a more enticing teaser and to make it quicker and clearer what this item actually is. My dislikes include I'm not loving the heading. I think I could go straight into the categories of freebies above the fold, along with a quick line in the same section that kind of, you know, indicates that all these resources are free. Um, I would also like for each one to be its own section so they're more defined between each other. I would love more visuals of the items themselves and for the visual to communicate the format. For example, could the visual communicate that it's a training video or a PDF or a quiz, etc. And also I would like for the main point or takeaway or the result of the freebie to be more quickly and easily understandable, like on our courses page, basically liberal use of bullet points and circled items, and then a call to action at the bottom. I think that the very bottom section of this page could use a redesign too. So let's start with rewriting the text for one of these freebies together. Let's pick the, um, maybe the homepage content planner would be a good one. So in terms of rewriting this copy, sometimes I just use my own brain. Sometimes when I'm a little lazy or just want to do things quicker and easier, uh, I do use ChatGPT and it is a fabulous writing assistant. So ChatGPT, the good thing about it is I've used it for so long that it's like very educated on my voice. And so just saying like, hey, make it my new brand voice. It knows that, which is awesome. So I'm going to copy what's currently here, go into ChatGPT. And the first thing, when you start any chat with ChatGPT, FYI, you need to tell it what it is, which I know sounds crazy, but there's actually a masterclass on AI on masterclass.com, which I love. And it had a bunch of AI experts and they say, this is the way you should start it. So I also like to be friendly to my AI assistant. Okay, so I gave it a little bit of context on what this copy is for, which page it's going on. I asked it to act as a world-renowned copywriter who specializes in conversion copy. And I gave it my current copy for the page. I asked it to evaluate that copy and also to let me know what are the best practices for website copy promoting another page with a freebie on it. I always like to ask it because sometimes ChatGPT forgets. Um, like what is best practice for a YouTube intro or for a hook or a headline on my website or whatever it is that I'm writing, I get it to remind me so it reminds itself of the best practices and then have it rewrite the copy. And then it did rewrite it, but it rewrote it in a way which doesn't feel super on brand for me, specifically the fire emoji, not really my vibe. Uh, it doesn't really fit. 
And so I asked it to rewrite it. Now I do like all of the text except for the headline. I think that the headline, it's not, it's still not very clear. So I'm actually going to use a different one, but otherwise I feel like it's done really well. So I'm going to add a new section and add a blank section. And I'll just paste in the text, which it gave me and clean it up a little bit. Okay, so now that I have my copy, I need to find a fitting layout. So let's go take a look at all of my inspiration for layouts. Okay, so there are aspects of this layout which I like. I like that we have on the left-hand side, big image of the actual freebie. On the right-hand side, a variety of different like fonts happening here and then our big download button. The thing which probably won't work for my website design is the fact that there's an image in the back and then it's sort of a rectangle of color over top. Reason being, it's gonna be like freebie after freebie after freebie after freebie after freebie on this whole page. And so having an image background and everyone might start looking a little intense. So, but kind of like image on the left, text on the right, button, very simplistic. I like the general vibe. So let's use this as my jumping off point for my layout. In terms of finding a fitting photo from the background, I want to find something which it doesn't look weird if part of the image is covered up. This one does look a bit odd. This one, I'm not sure about the black and white only with the green over top. Then very important in terms of opt-in gifts is having a visual of the item. And so I'm going to create these inside of Canva, inside what looks like an iPad, cause that fits really well and logically fits towards having like a kind of like workbook or a PDF or a guide. Now, actually I'm not hundred percent sold on the original layout, which I had seen, but actually I'm kind of liking this slide, which I found on um, Pinterest in my inspiration board. So I think I might try this one where it has the iPhone and look at that as inspiration. Next, I'm gonna pop all the elements onto the page, which I need. So my text block, my image block or my mockup, my button, and then I'm gonna try rearranging until I find a layout that feels good. And honestly, this can take me a while to find something that I really like. Now you'll notice I'm turning some text sideways. That is not normally possible inside of Squarespace. A few things you'll see me here do are not normally possible inside of Squarespace. Square Kicker is an add-on that you can get for Squarespace um, and it is fabulous and allows you to basically like CSS and custom code things without actually writing a line of custom code. It is a favorite. I like the idea of having some information, kind of like making a statement about what the thing is. Okay, it's a PDF workbook or what the topic is that it's covering. This whole page copy and content planner is basically, it helps with like strategy and copy. So I'm gonna add that in. Another thing which you can do with Square Kicker is to kind of place items differently. So sort of a little bit like overlapping the next section or having something parallelic scroll in or out. Once I find a design and a layout that I roughly like, I try to duplicate it and then see if I can actually do better than my original design. But I don't wanna lose it because I do like it, so I'm going to, again, duplicate this to make sure I can save my original. The PDF workout book and copy and strategy up in the corners kind of feels like it's just floating around and lost to me, so I'm gonna drag it down here and see how it looks. Still not 100% sold in this layout, so let me look back at some layout inspiration for maybe some more ideas. I really like this, where the pieces of text are actually to the left and right of the line as opposed to under the line. Let me try something like that. Now you'll notice I'm doing another thing here, which isn't really a thing. This is making a line out of a shape block. This is some custom code, which I added to my website, which anytime I add that specific shape, which let's be honest, I've never once used that shape, it turns into a vertical line. And I love using Square Kicker to turn my text sideways. That is honestly one of the most frequent things that I use it for. <laughs> So I like the idea of this scroll in, scroll out effect, but actually thinking about it, this page has like, I don't know, 10 or 15 <laughs> freebies. And so actually if I did that for everyone, I think it would be way too busy on the page. And if I did it just randomly, it might look a bit odd. So actually I'm not sold on this idea. Okay, so I do genuinely like the layout and design that I have right now. I feel like this looks really good, but it's a bit bare, I feel like. And so maybe adding an image in the back would look nice. Let me try that. 
Now in terms of an image, I want something that is not too bold and not too eye-catching. Because to be honest, the image is absolutely not the most important part of this page. It's honestly the opt-in graphic, which is. To make the image even a bit less noticeable, I'm going to put an overlay on it, which is quite intense. But actually I realized I don't like this image because there is a bit of text in it. And again, that's kind of drawing away from the actual important text on the page. So let me find something else. Next, I realized I'm gonna need quite a few of these images and also some different tester ones to see what could replace the image with the text. So I'm gonna go into all of the stock photos, which I have pre-curated and selected from the places I mentioned before, both LBA and ESI, and download all the ones that are not too busy and visually intense. Images which are a bit blurry or just of water or of nature or something of that sort is really great for a background image. There we go. That image feels like it fits cohesively to the rest of what's happening on the page. Isn't too bold, isn't too noticeable, but really adds a bit of visual interest. Next, I wanna make sure that this section and the next section, because I do have an image now going from top to bottom of the section, it's gonna look a bit weird if I just immediately duplicate this section. So I'm gonna create a divider line in between them. So it looks a bit more intentional from one to the next. Okay, so I think I'm finally happy with this layout. Now that means I can duplicate it and go on to creating the next opt-in. Now the next opt-in is something that I honestly was searching for and couldn't find, so I ended up making it myself. Um, it is a list of all of the fonts that exist in both Squarespace and Canva, because if you want your branding to look consistent, then you want to make sure that you're only picking fonts that exist in both places. So if you want that freebie, I will link it for you below. Okay, so picking the image for this opt-in gift, honestly, I don't really, I mean, the opt-in gift is about fonts. It wouldn't make a heck of a lot of sense to put an image with fonts in it because that would be highly distracting. So you know what? Some lemons looks good. It feels like an Italian vibe and my brand feels very European, so that fits. So very typically when you're designing a page and you want to move from one similar idea, so like one, opt-in to the next opt-in. You want the layout to look the same, but you do want to kind of change it up. Otherwise having the exact same kind of like mm, layout from one to the next section can get a bit boring. So I'm going to basically flip this all backwards for the second section. Which as you can tell, designing something for the first time, just getting the layout right, I spend a lot of time to get that correct because honestly, I'm gonna use it for a long time. <laughs> Once I have that designed though, honestly, the remainder of this page is gonna go so much faster because I'm basically just duplicating and importing content. For this one, I don't want the colors to be the same as the section before. That might get a bit boring, so let me try to change it up. I'm not loving the water photo actually. I feel like it looks, I don't know, it's too blue with the blue on the left-hand side. I'm not loving that, but I do like the blue generally, so I feel like I'm gonna switch the image. Don't love this flower image either because it just seems too similar to the lemon image, which I've already picked. The coffee looks a bit odd. It's just kind of like sticking out there. That one, that feels good. I'm gonna change my button color to red so it really stands out as it's my call to action. So it's the most important part of that section. Now, again, if I'm writing an entire page, I am using Ashlyn's templates for that, but just to rework this copy, ChatGPT will totally do. Don't love how long this paragraph is, so I'm gonna break this up. And I feel like ChatGPT wrote some eh, not super important text, so I'm gonna delete a little bit too. Let me change the details below on what the item is and the categories of it, and that looks pretty good. Now, this page still needs a header, the old header I'm not loving. Let me show you some inspiration, which I am kind of feeling for the new header. So I really like in my layout inspirations, there was someone had like a social proof section. I feel like this looked really cool. I liked the sort of like vertical lines and the bits side by side and seeing how, as I also have like four categories of freebies that kind of fits well. Or actually, no, I scaled them down. I scaled them down to three categories. Um, and I also like here how I have like a mixture, this is on my homepage, um, a mixture of the like font styles happening. So let's kind of mix those two ideas together into a new layout.
Okay, now this text clearly feels too big for the space. Okay, so I really like this bit happening down here, but this title feels like it's competing here, so I need to find a better way or maybe some more inspiration. This one feels very relevant, feels like gifty, beautiful envelope. Problem could be though, I think it's too bland and boring maybe for this background, but maybe not, we'll see. So again, I don't love the lack of variety and size between these, the complimentary gifts, and then the actual text. So I'm gonna make these guys smaller. Now, however, I don't love that with the italicizing, it doesn't look good in this font. might even do make it heading two but when it's vertical aligned it looks off with the line in between so I'm just gonna make it centered within the box that looks much better I like these three now that's good I actually like this where the title is sort of overlapping the section below where you can actually, we have the shape behind, the green shape behind, so you can actually make sure you can read the text really well. If I didn't have that there, it might be tough to read, but I am finding that there's not enough contrast between this image and this text. Granted, I do like the image, so I think maybe I just try adding an overlay on the background image. Makes it definitely easier to see. Okay, I think honestly this mixture is probably my best bet. Just want this text to match the text above. And while I do like the green actually instead of the yellow, it's a bit hard on the contrast. So that feels a lot better. Let's try moving this around a bit and see how it looks in different places. And there you have it. We took this and completely transformed it into this. Now, if you can imagine doing redesigns, not just for yourself, but for paid clients too as a proper designer, I realized that figuring out the entire web design client process can be rather confusing. So as a gift for making it this far in the video, I'm going to link for you my web designer client process template for you below too. But while all the things that we spoke about today here are important, I realized there's one vital bit that we actually skipped over. And that is picking the right colors can be so overwhelming. And it turns out there's an exact formula and rule for how to pick the right colors. It is called the 60-30-10 color rule, and I explain it fully for you in this video. So be sure to watch that one next.